Handicap International is the largest international organization that specializes in disability. Working alongside disabled people in 60 countries, Handicap International provides support and promotes active participation and inclusion of disabled people in society. Around the world, only one in 50 disabled children attend school, and Handicap International aims to promote their inclusion in education. In Rwanda, a small mountainous country in East Africa where the average income is just $260 a year and one in five children die before their fifth birthday, the challenges are great. In 1994, following the genocide in Rwanda that killed 10% of the population and left a country scarred, Handicap International began their work here. After the initial emergency support, Handicap International now works alongside partners at both local and national level to promote inclusion of disabled children in education. For me, uh, inclusion means that everyone has a right to everything that is proposed by the system. In a bid to promote inclusion, Handicap International invited eight teachers from Britain to visit Rwanda to share their experience and to learn from Rwandans who work with disabled people to ensure their inclusion in society. The teachers have varying kinds of teaching experience, but all have apprehensions about visiting one of the poorest countries in Africa. I'm quite nervous about it, really, and very, very excited. I've known about it for some months and I'm really, really excited to see what's going on out there and see what sort of challenges they're facing, see if it's um, any sort of challenge that I might be facing here as well. Nous, en Rwanda, comme Handicap International, ce que nous essayons de, de faire, c'est que nous, nous travaillons, nous soutenons les écoles ordinaires, les écoles primaires ordinaires, pour qu'ils soient à mesure d'accueillir donc tous les enfants, y compris les enfants qui ont, qui ont, des, qui ont des handicaps. Nous avons un certain nombre d'écoles, mais aussi des écoles ordinaires et des écoles spécialisées. Et nous leur proposons euh, des formations pour qu'ils puissent un peu être beaucoup plus à mesure d'offrir aux enfants euh, des, un enseignement qui est adapté à leurs besoins. Handicap International works with the Federation of Associations and Centres for Disabled People in Rwanda. The organization's president, Pierre Clava Rowaka, who's disabled himself, outlined the challenges faced in Rwanda. We, we have to say about education, other children, they don't accept him because they never been together. If the teacher don't accept that children, those children, other children will not also accept him. We also have teachers in our country who, who can find it difficult if children don't behave mm -hmm. in a certain way. Our teachers too can often say, you know, oh, I can't cope with that. Mm -hmm. um, and the other children will suffer. So it would be better not to have this child in my class. But it's because it comes from the government level um, as a head teacher, it's then much easier to say we, we must we must do this. This is policy, and therefore we do have to try our very best. For the education, also, we are thinking about how to do how to 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 include children with disability together with others in the same class. All the, those things was not thinking about before. Mm -hmm. And the other problem also in Rwanda is. Um, how Rwanda is, yeah, is a hill, hill country. It's also a big problem for accessibility and uh, long distance. So sometimes it discourages families, uh, parents to, to take their children to school. I believe that they are and we are in the UK doing the absolute right thing by trying to help people realise that people with special needs and people that have difficulties actually have a huge amount to offer as well and 
by accepting them we build a lot more tolerant and caring and sympathetic society and that in turn helps us to grow as a lot better people individually. Handicap International aims to increase the number of disabled children accessing quality and relevant education by working with both mainstream and special schools. At the HRD Centre, a special school for disabled children in Mohanga district, the teachers were greeted with a warm welcome and it was clear that director Madame Leoncy and her staff were doing what they could with the limited resources at their disposal. For most disabled children in developing countries, special education has provided the only chance of an education, and if schools such as this one were not here, then even more children would be left in their homes, cut off from society, a situation that occurs all too often. I've had a really good day today. We went to a special school. I was amazed to hear that the teachers have virtually no holiday and they spend their days off getting trained. À cause de, de, du génocide de la guerre, bien sûr, il y a eu donc, beaucoup de pertes, de pertes humaines, il y a, il y a eu peu d'enseignants, mais le Rwanda a très vite quand même mis des programmes pour former beaucoup d'enseignants. Mais aujourd'hui, la, la, la question c'est plutôt euh, former des enseignants qualifiés pour des méthodes adaptées et spécifiques pour les enfants handicapés, et donc qui, qui, qui puissent promouvoir l'inclusion de tous les enfants. Currently, the pupil-to-teacher ratio stands at 66 to 1, limiting the time a teacher can spend with each child. When we have the financial means, we have more personnel. I say that for the children's activities with the children, for the good relationship with the children, I say that it doesn't need to be necessarily the means of financial means, but it demands the heart of the person. We have children that have similar disabilities, but in terms of the resources and the equipment, we have a lot more. Um, but I would say that in the end, they're making fantastic things, they'll probably get very similar results in the end. The school strives for its pupils to have greater inclusion in the community and, where possible, refers children into mainstream education. One such child is Claude. Claude had polio as a small child, which prevented him from going to school. After getting physiotherapy and basic education skills at the special school, Claude eventually moved on to his local mainstream school. Teachers Donna and Vicky visit him to find out how he's progressing. His father, Joseph, tells how the road to mainstream education has been a long and difficult one. Slowly, Claude became more independent, more confident to interact with others, and Joseph felt his son was ready to enter a mainstream school. Claude's father was keen to get him into a mainstream school, a position not all parents share. Donc, pour qu'ils acceptent d'envoyer les enfants dans les écoles primaires, nous sommes obligés de d'abord faire des, des sensibilisations aux parents et en plus des sensibilisations que nous faisons avec, dans la communauté, avec aussi même les autorités de base, même les, les voisins et même les amis des parents. Quand j'avais ce... Vous voyez que c'est dans l'âge-là d'adolescence. Quand j'ai eu ce, ce handicap, 
j'ai constaté que la vie est terminée. C'est la raison pour laquelle j'étais très, très triste et je n'ai je pu parvenir à accepter mon handicap. Et puis, euh, j'allais même arrêter mes études. Ce sont mes parents qui, qui étaient tout près de moi. Et il y avait aussi les, les prêtres qui m'ont approché pour continuer, pour me conseiller, en fait, de continuer mes études. The importance of parental involvement was also highlighted when Naz and Tess joined Marie Rose from Handicap International to visit Bonheur. Today we visited a little girl called Bonheur. Uh, she was living with her auntie. Um, it was a tale really from the genocide because the auntie's husband had been killed, her sister's husband had been killed, and this little girl Bonner's parents had both been killed in the genocide. Uh, but that wasn't what had actually caused her disability, nothing to do with the genocide. She'd, at the age of six, she'd had a car traffic accident uh, where she'd been left in a coma. The end result uh, of, of her injuries was that she's left paralyzed on one side and with a, a really nasty scar that still bleeds on her, on her throat. All of that happened when she was six years old. Now she's 15 and she spent so much time in hospital that she's really missed out on education. Were the school welcoming? What, did they find it easy to welcome Bonner into school? Or was it difficult, difficult for you to when they first refused that, they saying that she was beyond the age of start, yes. starting the primary school. Mm -hmm. It just strikes me that Bonna is, has had a lot of lost time. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she needs a bit of extra support. Yes. What would you like your teacher to do for you that would make it easier for you to learn and help you to learn? She actually wants to become a teacher. And you know, just looking at her, it's not impossible. She can do it. That's encouraging too. So, so much of it's about money, but you know, for me, so much of it is also about having the will to really get what you need and have the child's best interests at heart. With limited resources and large class sizes, teaching children with a diverse range of educational needs in Rwanda can be challenging. Despite the difficulties, the successes are very apparent. It's funny, you know, when you go around schools, you, you sometimes just get a feel of kind of, you know, goodness almost. Yeah. There's good people working there who yeah. are kind of, they know what they're doing and mm. children are happy. And you could see that they were happy. You could see they were happy. Yeah. yeah, that's right. As cheeky as they were. Yeah, absolutely. This girl, Alodi, is also in a mainstream school in Mahanga. Not only does she keep up with her class, she excels, regularly achieving outstanding grades. She also has very definite views on how teachers can improve things for disabled students. <laughs> Handicap International strives for the inclusion of all children into mainstream education and it works together with special schools because they have a wealth of knowledge and experience that shouldn't be ignored. I think it's a wonderful place, I really do. It's quite inspiring that out of so little they've created quite a lot, an awful lot in fact. And 
they're catering for the children's needs. And, and a mum and dad involved, are parents involved in the whole process? <laughs> So, you know, you're ahead of us in making sure that the parents are clear of the targets for the holidays. Mm. That's something we can take back, wouldn't yeah. we, Tess? Yeah. Absolutely. This special school not only educates, it goes to great lengths to offer children a future within the community. They work alongside this local carpentry business, where some of the pupils are now gaining a vacation. Vocational training schemes such as this see disabled people as a resource, a resource that a country like Rwanda can ill afford to ignore. Another sign of disabled people being included in society was found at the Kigali Institute of Education. This is the first time that a Rwandan, got an, a Rwandan blind person got an education in Rwanda and went to university. It's absolutely the first time. Uh, Rwanda is a place where people who are disabled haven't really been uh, given that much, much of a priority. My personal aspiration is to see that uh, these people actually they own, their, their lives improve and that they get a better, uh, they are able to be integrated in society and to be included actually. This student, Innocent, who's blind, is part of the first wave of disabled students to begin a degree here. Okay, an école secondaire, nous étudions avec beaucoup de difficultés. Nous étudions avec nos collègues à côté, au pupitre, qui nous dictaient les notes au tableau, et nous avons l'écriture à notre à nos machines ou tablettes. Et avec les nouveaux équipements. Je pense que jusqu'à maintenant, nous n'avons pas encore et les utiliser bien. Je pense que ça va aller parce que je pense les équipements attendus sont à peu près complets. On a encore peur pour nous, mais ça va aller avec l'expérience. The developments here at the Kigali Institute of Education, together with the work of Handicap International and its partners, offer new hope for disabled learners in Rwanda. Il y a un changement et donc il y a un changement dans, dans la communauté et donc il commence à comprendre que les enfants ont droit le même droit que les autres. Aujourd'hui, on voit une, une dynamique, une volonté tant au niveau de la communauté, au niveau des institutions, au niveau du gouvernement et d'autres organisations de pouvoir vraiment euh, promouvoir une approche inclusive euh, euh, de l'éducation. I think the future is bright. The government is starting to take a more active role, I think, and we are hopeful that we'll get far. Le moment où j'étudiais, on ne parlait plus de l'éducation inclusive. Il n'y avait plus même la loi pour la protection des personnes handicapées. Mais jusqu'à maintenant, je vois qu'il y a un pas. Il y a, le, il y a tout au monde qui est impliqué dans l'éducation inclusive. Donc je suis euh, très optimiste. Je pense que l'avenir euh, nous promet des choses beaucoup plus intéressantes qu'aujourd'hui, et donc j'y crois.